In this video, we're actually going to take a look at a review of factoring. This is not in your textbook. However, it's an important skill that I find many of my students are lacking in. So I'm calling this video 0, 0.0, and then we're going to move on to section P after this video. So this is a review of factoring. The first thing that you should do, no matter how many terms you have, is to look for a greatest common divisor. So look for a factor that you can pull out of all of the terms of your polynomial. So for instance, let's look at my two examples below. In my first example, I have 5x squared minus 25x. Well, I can see that both of those have a factor of 5 and they also have a factor of x. So essentially, I can factor by, I can take out a greatest common divisor of 5x. Now when I do that, essentially what I'm doing is dividing both of those terms by 5x to see what's left over. So on my first term, I would have x left over, and my second term, I would have 5. Now for this one, I would be done. Because remember, when we're done factoring, we have either an x by itself with a coefficient in front, which is what I have here, 5x, and I can set that equal to 0 using the zero product property. Or I want just a binomial, x minus 5, 2x plus 3, something like that, because I can set that equal to 0 as well and very quickly find my solutions of x equals 0 and x equals 5. For my second example, it's not going to be quite as easy. I can take out a 9, which leaves me with x squared minus 9 equals 0. But this one doesn't work the same because I have still have x squared. So I have two x's together. That means I'm not done factoring. So we have two ways that we can solve from this point. And they're both going to result in the same solution. So let's start here. Difference of squares pattern. The difference of squares pattern says if you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, that's going to factor into the square root plus the square root and the square root minus the square root. So what's the square root of x squared? x. And what's the square root of 9? 3. And so now I have factored, and I can use the zero product property to say x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, so x is equal to negative 3 or positive 3. Now the other way I can do that with just two terms is I can take this binomial, x squared minus 9, and set it equal to 0. And instead of factoring it, I can just pop that 9 to the other side by addition, and then take the square root of each side. So if I take the square root of each side, I get x on the left and plus or minus 3 on the right, and I'm done. Now, the difference is do I need to have everything factored or am I just looking for solutions? So if I need to have everything factored, make sure you go with this option. Let's move on now to three terms. And with three terms, I'm going to break it into two parts, one where a is equal to 1 and one where a is not equal to 1. So when a is equal to 1, remember I'm talking about a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So I'm talking about the fact that this value in front of the x squared, the coefficient for x squared is 1. This is a little bit easier to factor than when a is not equal to 1. Um, so let's take a look at how we're going to tackle this. We're going to use find factors of c with a sum or difference of b. So looking at our first example, obviously a is equal to 1. And I'm looking at factors of 36. So 1 and 36. 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Those are my options. And it's always a good idea to list out the factors if you're new to factoring and struggle with it a little bit. It helps to make sense for you. Now, I'm going to look for either a sum of 5 or a difference of 5. How do I know? Well, negative 5, actually. So how do I know? Because this value is negative. So this tells me if it's a sum or difference. If it's a minus, I'm looking for a difference of 5. If it's a plus, I'm looking for a sum of 5. 
So looking for a difference of five, it appears that four and nine have a difference of five. Now I want that difference to be negative five, so I want the four to be positive and the nine to be negative so that when I add them together, I get negative five. Now that I've done all of the work, I'm just going to factor. So my factors are going to be x plus four and x minus nine. And of course I could solve that, but I don't need to. I'm just factoring now. Now for our second example, obviously this is a little bit trickier only because I've given you a common factor to take out of all three terms. And I haven't put everything on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything on the left-hand side of the equation by subtracting 33x squared and adding 84x. Then I'm going to take a common factor of 3 and x out of all of the terms, leaving me with x squared, and that's why this is a a equals 1 example, minus 11x plus 28 equals 0. Let me get rid of that one. So now, again, don't worry about the 3x on the outside. We factored it out. I'm going to look at 28 and factors of 28. So 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 3, oh, just kidding, 4 and 7. And I'm going to stop right there because I'm looking for a sum of negative 11. So if I add 7 and 4 together, I get 11. So really that just means they're both going to be negative because I need a sum of negative 11. So my final factorization is 3x on the outside and then x minus 4, x minus 7 equals 0. Now keep in mind if I were going to then solve this, I would have three solutions. So I would have x equals 0 from here, x equals 4 from here, and x equals 7 from here. Now let's take a look at factoring a polynomial where a is not equal to 1. So if a is not equal to 1, we're going to use something called amazing factoring because it has to do with the a value. In this case, the a value is 6, the b value is 1, the c value is negative 2. In our last examples, we looked for factors of 2 with a difference of 1. In this example, we're going to look for factors of a c with a difference of 1. So AC would be 6 times negative 2 or negative 12. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 12 and have a difference of 1. Uh, so let's see. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. And of course, that's a difference of 1. So how would I get a positive 1? I would make the 3 negative and the 4 positive. So what I'm going to do to factor is I'm going to start by saying x and then minus, I'm going to use minus 3, but I'm going to put 3 over a, which is 6. And for my second one, I'm going to put x plus, and instead of 4, it's 4 over 6. So this is why some people don't like this method, because there's fractions. But I assure you, if you can reduce a fraction, you can use this method. So I'm going to reduce 3 sixths to 1 half. I'm going to reduce 4 sixths to 2 thirds. And my last step, because obviously I don't want to leave it as a fraction, my last step is to just take the denominator out to the front. So I'm getting 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 2. Now I'm going to leave it to you to FOIL that back out to make sure that the results are correct, but I've already done so, and that is the correct factorization. Let's take a look at the second one. The first thing I'm going to do is factor out a 2 and put it in the correct order. So I'm going to write 6x squared minus 4x minus 16 equals 0. And now I'm going to factor out a 2. That gives me 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. And yes, you could have done that all in one step if you'd like. Now I'm going to use a of 3 b of negative 2, c of negative 8. So you could have done it without factoring out the 2 and use the um, values that are 2 times as big, but I'm going to do it this way. So a times c would be 3 times negative 8, 
or negative 24. So what numbers multiply to 24 with a difference of 2? Um, so I could do 12 and 2. I could do 8 and 3. I could do 6 and 4. And these have a difference of 2. So I'm going to keep the 2 on the outside. And I'm going to use negative 6 and positive 4 because I want that difference to be negative 2. And I'm going to write x minus and 6 over a. Again, this is a amazing factoring, so we're going to put it over a, which we're using as 3. And then x plus 4 over 3. And now we're going to reduce, so 6 over 3 turns into 2. So I don't have to do anything with that fraction. And on this one, I'm just going to put the 3 out front. So 3x plus 4. And again, you can multiply it back out to make sure that it works. Um, and I'll leave that for you to do. Once you start getting into 4 terms and 5 terms and 6 terms, you're really going to have to do that polynomial long division or synthetic division. We're not going to review that. It's not going to happen super often. So we're just going to review very quickly what happens when you can factor by grouping. So factoring by grouping is when we have four terms and it happens to fall into a pattern where I can split these into two groups of two and each group of two has its own greatest common factor. So looking at my first two terms, I get x and then x squared plus 3x, I'm sorry, x squared my fault. Let's try that again. x squared and then x plus 3. And then looking at minus 4x and minus 12, I would have minus 4 out of both, which would leave me with positive x and positive 3. So the only time factoring by grouping works is when you have the two factors exactly the same. So notice both of them left me with x plus 3, which means I'm really doing the distributive property in reverse here. I'm going to say I'm going to take an x plus 3 out of both terms, and that leaves me with x squared minus 4. Now I've got two terms because I still have an x squared I know I'm not done. Now I have two terms, so I have to factor that. That's 2 um, perfect squares, so that's the perfect square or difference of squares pattern, x plus 2, x minus 2. So now I have factored. And again, I would set each of those equal to 0 if I were asked to solve as well. This is just a review of everything that we've talked about today to make sure that you are comfortable with factoring. Coming up next, we're going to cover section P.1 of your textbook which is sort of the preview chapter. We're going to recall graphs, intercepts, symmetry, and so on.